Okay, so thanks a lot. Thanks to the organizers for the invitation and for the perfect uh, organization and for bringing us here in this magnificent uh, place. Thanks a lot. And uh, I hope I'm not disappointing uh, Mladen uh, too much. No piadical functions. Uh, <laughs> so I, in this talk, I'll move to the dark side of the force and try to bring in more perfectoid uh, spaces. Uh, so what I'm going to report on is uh, uh, work uh, of three years ago of, uh, of Adrian Jovita, uh, where there was uh, a question which we, which we couldn't answer and uh, that I will try to recast in terms of uh, uh, using perfect noise spaces. And uh, finally, I will mention a theorem that for the moment is written on paper. It's not tagged yet, so I don't know if I should say it's work in progress or not, but... Uh, we have the details. We hope that uh, writing them up in tech, uh, they will uh, survive. Okay, so let's start with some notation. And in the, in the perfectoid space that will appear will be actually one of the easiest uh, ones in a global sense. It's just uh, a perfectoid modular curve. Okay, so we take uh, n bigger or equal to three, an integer, that will be used to define the level structure of our modular curve. I will fix a prime p, p big or equal to three for technical reasons that I don't want to enter into, and assume that p does not divide n. And then I will, I will fix a congruent subgroup in SL2 z, which will define my level structure. So we have a full level, full level n. and uh, gamma zero p level structure inside SL to Z. And uh, we let uh, X, which, well, it's the modular curve of level gamma over, I will simply work over CP, so the completion of an algebraic closure of QP. And since I, we need to take a perfectoid, a perfectoid, the universal cover of it, I will also write uh, calligraphic uh, X for its uh, associated adic space. Then another thing that I want to consider on X so since I have been careful to use this uh, full level n structure, uh, I have a universal family on X, at least I'll be from the cusps, and then I can extend it to a connected group scheme over X, which I call E. So I'll put the uh, the word generalized just to swap the details under the rug of what happens at the cusps. So we just extend it as a, as a GM. Uh, and the important thing is that I have a zero section and using that I can uh, consider the invariant differentials, which I will denote by omega, small omega. Of E relative x, and this is an invertible OX module, and actually at some point I will consider it uh, as an invertible uh, module on the adic space, I will keep the same, the same notation, I hope uh, it's not too confusing. Okay, so let me uh, start to, to motivate things with the following theorem of faultings. which is sort of the Piadic analog of the eichler shimura isomorphism, which uh, says uh, the following. So if I take, uh, uh, if I let uh, k positive integer, or no negative integer actually, will, this will be the weight floating around in the chalk. I take uh, L of k, the k symmetric power of uh, zp squared, this has a natural action of, of gamma. 
<coughs> so for k equals zero, it's just, uh, just considered to be ZP. And then we have the following isomorphism. So I have uh, an isomorphism between the uh, group cohomology with values in LK, tensor over ZP with ZP, and this isomorphic to H0 of the invariant differential to the k plus two power, direct sum H1 of x omega minus k tensor Cp, and this you can sort of view using shared duality as an H0 of omega k tensor the invariant, the differentials of the modular curve. So you can view it as uh, cusp forms of weight k plus two. There are three twists that I'm forgetting here. Okay, I'm not interested in the extra action of the Galo group of uh, QP bar over QP, okay? Uh, so, sorry, no, no tensor with CP. So on, on my notes I had the, the T twist that I don't want to consider. Okay, so it's a, simply, I'm simply writing it as an isomorphism of CP vector spaces. And the question that uh, uh, we have been considering with Adrian for long now uh, with, uh, with Glenn Stevens uh, a lot actually, and then also by ourselves, is the following. So what about periodic variations in the way K of such Isomorphism, okay? So it means uh, three things, okay? So I want to periodically vary, first of all, the left-hand side, which I will refer to the et al side of the picture because the left-hand side can be interpreted in terms of uh, et al cohomology. So I want to sort of periodically interpolate those coefficients on the et al side. Then I want to periodically interpolate, okay? So the differential side, right? So the, the right-hand side of the isomorphism, and then I also want to interpolate this comparison map, okay? So that's what uh, is in front of us. And uh, let us start with, uh, with explaining, first of all, so let me simply remind, since we, we saw it one of the first few days, uh, how you can sort of take a, a full moduli of those periodic variations. So the moduli for this is the weight space. So these, these are parameterized by the weight space W, which is simply the generic fiber of the Vazapa algebra. And here you have a tautological universal weight, which actually will give uh, such variations once you specialize two points, okay? And uh, we saw, for example, that uh, also, again, in the first few days, that Z is contained in, uh, in the QP points, in fact, of W. And here, an alpha in here, it's simply, so the, I should say, sorry, so this classifies, so if, for example, if I consider it over CP or any base, so the continuous homomorphisms from ZP star to ZP star. And for example, any alpha like this defines uh, a weight in, in this sense uh, simply by sending X to X to the alpha. Okay, so that's the basic uh, universal family of variations that we're going to consider. And uh, actually, for simplicity for, for this talk, I will work with an affinoid W prime of W, which classifies analytic weights, where K universal is analytic, 
it's a CP points classifies, in fact, not simply continuous map, but uh, analytic maps from ZP star to ZP star, by which I mean that if you take uh, 1 plus P ZP, okay, and I consider it as a periodic manifold, then the induced map is really analytic. It, has, it can be really written as the values of a, of a convergent uh, power series in one variable. Okay, so now it's clear what kind of periodic variation of uh, weights we have. And uh, the second thing that I want to, in, in, uh, in order to explain, is how to vary LK. And here, periodically, and here we follow very closely, uh, closely uh, what uh, Glenn has done. Okay, so objective one, periodic variation on the et al side, and this uh, give us the, so, well, I'll, uh, I'll explain. So this will lead you everything I'm going to say is based on work of, of Glenn Stevens. So we do the following. So we take uh, T0, which is uh, the following uh, subset of uh, ZP cross uh, ZP. And mind that uh, this is an action actually of the Ibahori. Right action. And hence also of our gamma, and uh, I want to consider, so if, if I take uh, K, let me assume it's uh, a weight uh, in our subspace, preferred subspace W prime over some finite extension of QP. You can do things more generally by taking uh, uh, wide opens. Uh, I'll say something when uh, the problem, when, what the problems that we have to face uh, will show up. But for example, let's consider such a weight. It could be classical, it could be analytic, uh, very generally analytic. And I define a k naught as the analytic functions from this uh, periodic variety t zero to o k with the following property that uh, it transforms under the weight uh, K for the action of T. So, so this also has a diagonal action of uh, ZP star, right? Acting as a scalar multiplication. So sorry, this is a K of uh, A times uh, F of T for every A in ZP star and for every T in T zero. And then the second thing that I require is that uh, F1z is an analytic function in z, it, has, it lies uh, in a convergent power series in z. Of course, this tells us, since uh, by this property, this f is determined for all pairs, that in fact this is isomorphic uh, to okz, as an OK module, but I'm writing things in this way simply because uh, the fact that I view this A K naught as functions on T0 and the fact that there is an action of the Ibahori that in fact induces an action of the Ibahori subgroup that you can write explicitly. It's some sort of maybe uh, transformation in the variable Z up to some automorphic factor, so very, very familiar. And then I define the space of distributions, so the continuous OK dual of AK0, and then maybe I will drop this uh, DK 
this uh, knot later on simply, that means simply that I invert, uh, I invert P. Okay, that's uh, some construction. So let me tell you why uh, it interpolates uh, in some way this, uh, this LK and the remark is, this follow, is the following that if you take uh, an integral weight k, an integral weight uh, k, then among those analytic functions, actually you can consider homogeneous polynomial functions, okay, where the homogeneous degree is k, okay? So you have a preferred subspace pk inside uh, a k naught, sorry, keep changing my font, sorry about that. So p k, which are sort of the homogeneous polynomial functions of degree k that in here are simply the, the polynomials in z of degree up to k, okay? And then by dualizing, I get, uh, in fact, uh, a map in the opposite direction. Well, let me also invert P. And uh, <coughs> sort of homogeneous polynomial functions, I considered it as, a, as an OK module. So the quotient is a, is a K module, OK? Here in my theorem, I had a ZP module. But uh, so the dual is, in fact, isomorphic to LK tensor ZPK. Okay, so we have a huge space. You see it's uh, infinite uh, rank, and but uh, it specializes whenever you take uh, uh, classical weights to something smaller, which is what appears uh, in our theorem, okay? This slight extension of scalars uh, doesn't really play, play any role, okay? Also in the isomorphism that I wrote there, okay? Okay. So let me erase this and let me tell you what we can say about the cohomology of this space. So the theorem is that uh, if you take uh, the group cohomology of this uh, space dk, this is the space that Glenn Stevens uh, has really studied a lot and where actually you can make explicit computations uh, using explicit basis of modular symbols that you can implement on computer and so on and so on, can be in fact interpreted in something fancier, which is uh, the Tal cohomology of your curve with the coefficients uh, in dk. So the fact that uh, you have this action of, uh, of, the, so of this Ivahori subgroup tells you that uh, this dk becomes uh, a local system. But I will, expl I will come back to this uh, later on. Yes? No, I'm, I, I, will, I, will, I will come back to this. Uh, viewed as a local system. And actually to avoid uh, taking compass apart here, instead of the etal topology, I will consider the Kummer etal topology, which wants to compute the etal cohomology of the open modular curve, okay? So the Kummer etal topology simply allows you to take uh, over the cusps ramified covers. Okay, and that's something that we will need when we do the computations, because uh, if you take the perfectoid uh, modular curve, where you trivialize the p, p to the n torsion of the elliptic curve, what happens in the cusps, if you do the computation for the Tate curve, is that you are taking uh, more and more ramification at the cusp. Okay, so you have to allow in the theory this kind of uh, covers. So that's the, the K that appears here. You can sort of safely ignore it. And uh, actually this can even be sort of just up to an isomorphism with the, instead of the pro-etal topology, the pro-cumeretal topology 
of the same uh, local system. Okay? Okay, very fancy, but I just want to say that sort of we move from group cohomology to the world of a tal cohomology, even on addict spaces, and it, is, it will be actually this group that will be able to compare to uh, differential forms. Okay, and here maybe I should say one word about uh, uh, why I made this uh, funny assumption, okay, why I, I took a finite extension, or I told you you can do it more generally replacing OK with uh, the open ball in a wide open, simply because to, to get this uh, kind of results, so this is a Gaga type. And it follows from the fact that under that hypothesis, or in this more general setting that I just mentioned, that still allows two families, uh, the fact that uh, DK admits an exhaustive uh, and separated descending filtration, which is uh, invariant for the action of the Ivory subgroup, and with the quotients with graded pieces, that are finite of cardinality. So this is uh, Pollock-Stevens. So by sort of playing a usual game with inverse limits, you are reduced to prove such comparison results for, uh, for such graded pieces, which are finite torsion modules. And then you have uh, Gaga for the modular curve of the complex numbers, which allows you to go from here to here. And then you have a result of Scholze that actually allows to compare, compare the rest. Okay. But if you don't like all this, you can sort of forget for the moment and at least uh, be happy with the periodic variation of these group cohomology groups. That, is, that was the first thing that we had in mind to do. Okay, so the second thing that I want to vary periodically is uh, on the form, modular form sites. Okay, so periodic variations for the modular forms. So here I'll, I'll draw a picture that appeared yesterday in the lecture of Udi. So if you take uh, so the, the special fiber over FP bar, we said our two components, uh, each one isomorphic to the special fiber of the modular curve with full level N structure, okay? Uh, they meet in the super singular points. And actually, there are two components that I sort of uh, label as infinity. So remember here we have uh, a level P subgroup that gives the level structure. So there's one component where the level subgroup on these open parts where the, modular, the, the elliptic curves are ordinary is mu P and then you have a zero part where the level subgroup is in fact uh, Z mod PZ. And actually this gives uh, the composition of uh, the addict space in two regions, okay? So this is the infinity part, this is the zero part, and then these are the, the part, this is the part which uh, goes to the super singular points, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so with the and actually, uh, so this uh, super singular region, you can sort of you have a measure on how much you are entering, okay, which is given by the Hass invariant. So the vanishing of the Hass invariant or of a lift of it, if you want, you take for p equal to five, the Einstein series of weight uh, p minus one, Hass invariant measure how deep in this super single region you are. So for example, if it is invertible, you are either here or here, otherwise you start getting into, okay? And actually there is a way to, to sort of define tubular neighborhoods, which are sort of uh, given by this uh, epsilon, okay? So for epsilon equal to zero, you get only the ordinary part. Actually, I will be interested in regions of uh, around infinity. So this defines uh, sort of strict neighborhoods of uh, x infinity. And uh, what we proved with uh, Jovita and Piloni is the following uh, fact that uh, for epsilon small enough, so there exists an invertible sheaf omega on x infinity epsilon times this analytic part of the weight space uh, with the property that uh, for every k in uh, z, which we view inside uh, the QP points, okay, uh, of our W prime. What you can do, you can specialize, right? So you get uh, one plus K, a map to X infinity epsilon. You can take the base change of omega and what you get, so omega, the k is in fact uh, the usual, it's isomorphic to the usual Hodge, uh, Hodge bar, the sort of the, the little omega that we, that we had. Okay, and moreover, so we have a very nice uh, way of deforming things, but mind that now we have some, do, done something funny, because for example, if I take a CP point of the weight space, so where the, the space is Piadic, okay? I, I'm able to give you a meaning of what it means to raise your invertible sheaf to a piadic power. That's a non-trivial operation, okay? So you should be a bit careful. You should contemplate this for a few seconds now. Let's continue. And so the, and the other thing is that uh, actually in this way, we also recover uh, Coleman's theory in the sense that uh, we have the following result, that if you take uh, uh, the limit over all uh, epsilon of H zero X epsilon of omega, we get really sort of Coleman families over W prime over smaller uh, affinoids. Okay, so you get also a geometric way of defining Coleman families while remember the approach of Coleman is to sort of use what you want to be a periodic order form, meaning the Einstein series, to cook up things and then uh, over convergent modular forms of some periodic weight K are simply over convergent functions times uh, uh, this Einstein series weight K. So it's a very ad hoc definition that uh, will not work actually for more general Shimura varieties because you don't have a large enough supply of, of Eisenstein series while there is hope, and that's actually what we, we did more generally with the Adrian and Piruni to extend this geometric approach. We really have sheaves. Well, there is uh, sort of, not, not yet. Not, decades not appearing yet here, okay. 
No, not yet, exactly. It's not so, the space where you will be Yes. So there is a, a UP operator, and you should do the sort of. all the TLs. The TLs are also fine. So when I, I say that these two are the same, they are the same for the ACU operators. The only thing is that, and that's the non trivial step, you have to do the spectral theory of UP operator to really combine the two and get, for, for example, uh, eigen variety, eigen curve. Yes, yes, all conversion model forms. Sorry? It's the specialization. Yes, it's a power, yes. That's the true power. And this is the specialization. So this Coleman over convergent forms. So the, the more you enlarge your W prime, the smaller you have to take your epsilon. Yes. Yes, absolutely. But then you have to sort of shrink epsilon more and more. OK, so now we have the two sides of the picture. I we, we want to see whether we can compare the two. OK? So a comparison, a comparison map. In families. And here, let me recast the comparison using, uh, as promised, I know you are excited, the perfectoid. Uh, modular curve. And I will need the, the period map to P1, QP, and here is pi. So uh, the perfectoid modular curve is defined, is characterized by the property that it's similar in a sense that uh, I don't want to make too precise to the adic space uh, associated to modular curves of full level p to the n times n. Okay, so affinoids covering this perfectoid space are obtained by taking uh, an affinoid of one of the species and then of the species, and then taking the inverse limit over all these this full Galois towers. Note that uh, the, the transition maps are all finite, and they are etal away from the cusps, they are cumer etal at the cusps. Okay. Okay. And also, actually, topologically, so the topological space underlined is the same as the uh, topological space underlined underline this. Okay, let me try to be more down to earth. And first of all, let me describe for you the universal properties of this XP infinity, okay? And so the, 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 the property is the following, that there exists a cover by affinoid perfectoid opens spa R, R plus of XP infinity such that, so the universal elliptic curve E over spec of R, if you want, extends to spec of R plus, that's uh, algebraizable. And I have a trivialization of the PI dictate module is uh, trivialized Oops. it's trivialized as an etal local system i should say as a kuber etal local system so that it has everywhere rank 2 even at the cusps but otherwise let's consider just the affine part without the cusps so i require that my e has a narrow model over r plus 
that you can always achieve uh, up, to, uh, up to taking some uh, cover by rational opens of any actually affinoid perfectoid. And then I require that one. So that is not very important. For This is really the universal property that characterizes maps from perfectoid spaces to this thing. But I'm, using, I'm going to, to use this to describe also the period map. OK? So the period map is defined as follows. Mm. <clears throat> so there is a map. Uh, which is uh, which I call the log from the TP points uh, of R to omega e in fact over R plus defined as follows. So if you take uh, the quotient, so this is isomorphic to a dual p to the n. R, suppose this is a finite, otherwise you use this uh, Kummer stuff. Uh, so these are, by properness, simply the RP plus points. So these are the homomorphism over R plus of E P to the N to GM. And then for any such, you can take uh, the pullback of the invariant differential on GM, and I get. Uh, a map to omega e over r plus modulo p to the n. So that's why to give this map, I sort of insist on having this property. I take the limit over all n, and that's uh, the map that I have. And actually, here it's harmless to invert uh, p, and I get my map to omega e over r. OK. <clears throat> so now you see. So this tp of r is uh, trivial. It's uh, because I've trivialized, I have a basis, so I have also have a dual basis of the dual. And now look, I have uh, uh, an invertible sheaf, right? I have an invertible sheaf over my spa RR plus. I have two sections, and actually one can prove that uh, uh, this map, uh, uh, so result, the R linearization of this map D log is onto, is subjective. So I have a, an invertible sheaf, two sections generating it. What do you get? A map to P1. So you get our period map. OK. Good. Now that we have uh, this period map, uh, we want to consider automorphic vector bundles, right? So we have uh, the compact dual. Here you have nice, uh, maybe nice sheaves. So we want to pull them back. Here we want to compare them with maybe vector bundles coming from X, okay? And that's sort of the philosophy behind the comparison isomorphism that we are considering, okay? OK, so morphic, it's not really precise, correspondence. So I, as I said, so I consider, OK, actually, I, I forgot to say, and that's important. So this you should really see as, uh, so it's, it's an, an infinite limit of Galois covers of X, okay? And so it's uh, sort of some Galois cover uh, under the eva hori side group. It's eva hori invariant. Here you have, a, you have an action of the eva hori then. On P1, you also have an action of the eva hori. And this actually this map, uh, pi Hodge state, is uh, eva hori equivariant. So now if I take, uh, if I consider uh, 
En i vad har i eh, eh, want equivariant local system on P1 QP, let me call it L, then by taking its inverse image via P hot state, that defines uh, an Iwahori equivariant local system on this X uh, P infinity. And in fact, since the, the basic open affinoids cover, cover this uh, perfect affinoids, that essentially a basis also for the uh, procumeretal topology, you define a local system. Example. Example. So we take, uh, for example, Zp plus Zp with its uh, right action of Ivahori. It's a very nice sort of local constant system on P1. Okay, I pull it back. Via pi watch state uh, up star, and I get uh, exactly up to this duality. I don't want to sort of consider too much. I exactly get. Uh, uh, the, the periodic heat module of the elliptic curve, which of course defines a local system on exploital, and actually it's trivializing that that we get this uh, xp infinity. Okay, so that's the first input, and then what I wish is to find. A sheaf or vector bundle, maybe on X plus a comparison between an Eva Hori equivalent comparison between pi up the star of V and this. Uh, L, for example, up to tensoring with some period shifts. So I want to match up these two categories in some way. And then I will say that my V is associated to my L and vice versa, so that I can compare them. And then the isomorphism cohomology that we saw in Falting's theorem is nothing less than the realization of this isomorphism once you take cohomology groups. Okay? Okay. So let's see, for example, for that, uh, for that example of Zp plus Zp. Sorry? On to, on to, subjective. Sorry. Okay. So, for example, so one can really, one can make it into an automorphic correspondence not only in this case, but in the case of Shimura varieties of Hodge type, uh, once I have uh, uh, modules here that arise, for example, from uh, algebraic representations of the Levy of the parabolic of the underlying algebraic group. In this case, the Levy is GM. So the only interesting representations are given by maps to GM. So you have algebraic representations that are simply uh, uh, sort of listed by integers, and then the representations that you get uh, are sort of the determinant of these representations and power of those, and the vector bundle that you get here are simply powers of the little omega 
integer powers of the little omega. And the comparison that you get here is simply given by pieces of the sort of Hodge state in the composition. Okay? So let me say simply this very briefly. So this is made precise by Karajan Scholze. for representation of the Levy, which in our case is, is GM, but it's sort of it's a more, more general theory. But let's, uh, it's not sufficiently general for us. Let's co consider uh, the case over there. Consider for every integer, let's consider this uh, LK, which is the symmetric powers of ZP2, with, uh, which has an action of the Vahori, is the one induced by the right action on ZP time, times ZP. Then the associated uh, local system, it's simply sim k of TPDE. The associated vector bundle, on X is in fact the symmetric power of H1 the run of E relative to X. And then the relative sort of B the run comparison isomorphism that is proven by, by Scholze tells us that these two are isomorphic uh, if you take the appropriate uh, period ring, which is B the run. or XP infinity is not really different after tensoring with a very big period shift, which is bitter. Okay? So this philosophy in this case can be made very, very precise. What about our case? And actually, maybe uh, I can also, uh, since it's still on the, on the blackboard, um, let me sort of describe a shadow of this. So, for example, uh, um, so if instead of comparing the two with the Bideram, we simply take the Hodge state comparison isomorphism, let me tell you how, for example, you use this D log to get such comparison, okay? So uh, D log gives a map for every K in, well, in N, okay, from the symmetric power of uh, TP E dual and up, up to taking duality is isomorphic to LK. No. To in fact omega or pi up star of omega to the K. And then upon taking a cohomology on the Procumer et al. side, okay, so this is isomorphic to H1 gamma of L of K that we saw at the beginning, okay? At least if I, well, I don't need to tensor with SP, okay? I so I have the relation with the usual group cohomology, and I have a map. So here I should really say here I, I consider it as a, a I, I linearize with the Kumar et al. Uh, sheaf, and then here I get the cohomology of this uh, of this sheaf. 
Okay? The cohomology of this sheaf uh, gets into it uh, the cohomology, the Galois cohomology of this big uh, profinite uh, uh, sort of coverings that are used to define the proletal topology. And that's an essential computation of uh, faultings that appears already in the theorem that I mentioned, that is, in fact, uh, it's isomorphic to omega squared. Okay? And using group cohomology, sorry, sorry, not the group cohomology, cohomology on the proof cohomological side of this, it turns out that actually you have a piece, which is what? So you have the sort of the H1 cohomology groups that gives uh, omega squared, and you have a spectral sequence uh, uh, with the global cohomology of, of the modular curve that uh, intervenes, and actually this is, gives you a map to H0 of X pro et al, or uh, et al, or X, doesn't matter because it's a current chief of omega K plus two. Sorry? Yes, I could call it phi up a star, yes, yes. It's a matter of conventions, yes. Okay, so I mean that explicit map uh, sort of gives a piece that appears into the decomposition that we saw at the beginning. And in fact, uh, the other piece uh, comes from dualizing this map, and then you have an omega minus k, and then you have the h1 of omega minus k appearing on the other side, that actually gives the isomorphism between the two. Okay, so what happens in our case? So in our case, so we have this uh, DK, which is a very nice uh, OK module or K module with an action of the Eva Hori, okay? But uh, if you pull it back, Uh, so it defines uh, an inverse system of local systems, and this has no chance of having uh, an associated vector bundle. So using uh, usual terminology, we should say that it is not in the relative sense crystalline, it's not, yeah, it's not uh, the RAM, it's not even Hodge state. So it's very bad from the point of view of comparison isomorphism. So it seems that we are screwed, but we still have that map. So in fact, uh, over close enough uh, neighborhoods of the ordinary locus, the ones where we proved uh, with Adrian and Vincent the existence of this uh, sheaves omega, in fact, we can prove that uh, uh, there exists uh, a different integral structure on omega e. So you see omega e is the sheaf of uh, invariant differential of your, of, of your elliptic curve over the modular curve. You could take a model of the modular curve, extend the elliptic curve over Zp, and take the invariant differentials of that. That defines an integral model in that sense. We are finding a different one, which uh, I call it uh, omega EP, that coincides with the geometric one that I just defined only on the ordinary locus, such that over the inverse image of this x infinity epsilon, so let me call this uh, x infinity epsilon with the p infinity as a structure, the map uh, d log in fact, is surjective okay. 
So here it's on to if invert p. Okay. Here we are saying it's surjective if you want to consider on R plus. So here you have uh, TP e dual tensor R plus. Here we have this integral structure which is defined over R plus. And uh, the map is surjective without inverting p. Okay. And then this allows us, working formally with the analytic functions, this gives a map from this uh, pi Hodge Tate minus one of the kappa tensor this, uh, now I can invert x, doesn't matter. I can invert p, sorry. Subjective map to my omega k. Okay? So this, uh, this, in particular, actually, one can even prove that this modular symbol tends with the structure shift. Thanks to this, they acquire descending filtration, and the first piece is exactly this uh, this shift that we've seen before, where k is one of these uh, periodic analytic weights that we have been uh, have been considering. So let me conclude uh, uh, what this gives upon taking cohomology. So we get a map uh, from H1 D kappa tensor CP. So this is isomorphic to, sorry? Yes. Five minus one, what's state of this? Yes. Yes. It's a local system with an action of Eva Hori of, uh, of this shift here. Now I can uh, uh, sort of, ah. by Hodge state minus one decay tensor all x p infinity, I have a restriction of h1 x procumeretal epsilon of the same shift, and this maps to this uh, h0 of x epsilon omega k plus 2. Let me finish with the theorem. Okay, so we have so this isomorphism is uh, uh, follow from work of Schulze, from the fact that we have something uh, proper if you reinterpret this in the way I did before, as a cohomology on the procumeretal side, x is proper, and then for a finite uh, local system tends to be the structure shift. Uh, you get exactly this kind of results. So that really follows the direction of Schulze. Then I restrict over this open where I have this nice map, which does not exist globally. And actually, this can also be proven to be an isomorphism. And the theorem is that, uh, uh, and it explains the title. So here I have over convergent modular symbols that I can interpret in terms of modular forms. And I wonder, when do they come from something global, from something classical, in the sense that it's really a group cohomology? And the theorem is that uh, taking uh, slope less or equal to h decomposition for the UP operator that exists in this uh, theory, I get a surjective map excluding the weights k, which are critical.
So for any H, so there is no, so without taking slope decomposition, it's not really clear what this map gives. But if you take slope decomposition, that compensates from the bad behavior of the sheaths, the fact that they're not the RAM, they're not uh, Hodge state, they are nothing, that's compensated by this slope decomposition, and we get a map which is surjective, except for those critical weight, which actually can be proven in those cases are bad in that sense, that in the sense that the map is not surjective on the complement of the weight that I'm considering. Okay? <clears throat> and I'll stop here. Thanks. Any questions or comments?